The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, hello. Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone is doing fine. Have uh, one, be someone trying to finish logging in, so I'm just going to give them a moment and then uh, we'll begin. All right, well, we have a lot of material to cover in the hour, so I'd like to go ahead and begin. This is the Report Designer Basic Training Webinar. Today is Wednesday, August 8th, 2018. My name is Eric Johnson, and I will be your Winwood Training Facilitator today. I'm a technical support engineer here at Winwood Studios. I've been here for almost a year now. Maybe you've interacted with me through help desk tickets. Well, welcome everybody. You may have noticed that when you logged into the go to web the go to meeting webinar, you have a toolbar. Uh, the, the arrow that you see on your screen is pointing to the raise your hand icon. So if any time during the webinar you have a question or are or are experiencing technical difficulties, please feel free to click that button to ask your question or to notify me of anything that's wrong. The prompts I have for questions in chat are on my other screen, so I may not see a question immediately. Usually I wait until the Q&A session at the end to answer your questions, but I'll check occasionally in case something is posted. Again, this is a basic introduction to Report Designer. We assume that you haven't used Report Designer. Maybe you've installed it, but you probably haven't built any templates. You don't know too much about the interface or how to add tags to your documents. So we'll go over the very basic, the fundamental things to do with Report Designer. Next week, there's an intermediate training webinar scheduled where we'll cover more advanced features. But for today, to give you a little idea of the machine I'm working on, my system is using Windows 10 operating system, which is 64-bit. And I'm also using Office, also 64-bit. It's okay to use 32 or 64-bit. We recommend using 64-bit um, which, as this allows you to utilize all the memory on your machine when building a template and gathering data from your data source, because sometimes you're, you're pulling a lot of data and it requires a lot of memory. I think 32-bit only allows you two gigs of memory. 64 can utilize all you have in your hardware. And the ver version of Report Designer that I'm using is 15.2.345.0. And you can find this version on our downloads webpage. OK, I want to give you a high level overview of what we'll be discussing today. We'll take a look at what's within the auto tag and auto tag manager tabs. We'll create a, temp, a simple template using the for each and out tags to create just a couple of lists. Uh, these two tags, the for each and out tags, being the most popular tags that you'll use. We'll go over input parameters or what we consider variables, which are used to filter before you generate output. 
We'll go over a couple of data source wizards, more specifically SQL and XML. We'll cover how to generate a report and how to get some help at the uh, very end. Okay. Well, we're first going to look at what's in the Auto Tag Manager tab. You're not going to access this tab that often. It just kind of gets your environment set up. We'll discuss the data source button, which is what you'll use to connect to your data source. We'll go over the find and replace tool. We'll discuss the about button. We'll look at the license button. So if you're using a temporary key and want to update it to your permanent key, I'll show you where to, where to do this and uh, where to get samples and other tutorials after this webinar. So let's go ahead and take a look at report designer. I'm going to open up a blank Word document. Okay, so when you install Report Designer, there will be two tabs added to your Word ribbon, uh, the Auto Tag tab and also the Auto Tag Manager tab. Uh, right now, let's go ahead and take a deeper look at what's in this Auto Tag Manager tab. So over here on the left in the data section, is your data sources button. Um, and this button connects you to your data. So if you're using JSON, XML, SQL, or OData, uh, these are the four types that we support. This is where you'll set up your connection. To the right of that is the load and create pods. And this is a great feature that lets you reuse items that you've already created, and you can use those items in other templates. So this really speeds up the development process. And um, if you like to get more information on this, um, you can visit our wiki, and there's uh, some documents on there. Uh, but this is a great feature for reusing content um, that's used in a lot of templates. Okay. A little to the right is this generate code button. And this is handy for the develop, developer types. It shows you how to generate the code from the template that you're working on for our Winward engine. So if you're using the .NET, Java, or RESTful engines, it shows you the code and how to reference the template and generate the output. Okay, I'd like to move on over here to this tool section and want to point out this find and replace button. I'm actually going to go ahead and click it right now to open it. And this is a very handy tool that sometimes is forgotten about, but it's an easy way to update all your tags in your template. Um, so let's say when you go to create a template, you set up a data source, and when you do that, you need to give it a nickname. And when you first set it up, the nickname made sense, but as you're progressing through the development of the template, um, you feel like that nickname could have been better, a stronger nickname. So it's how to do that is you could actually use this find and replace tool. You could type in the value that you're looking for, the old nickname. You type in what you want to replace with, the new nickname. And we give you options down here that you can just replace that nickname in the for each and the end for each uh, tags, in the L tag. You can choose other tags, the if, the else, the end if tags. You can deselect them and choose just the set tags. You don't only have to change the nicknames. You could change the 
the VAR that's used, the VAR status, the format. So we give you all sorts of ways to do a mass change by using this find and replace tool. A very handy tool um, for updating your template. I'm going to skip over now to this options section and let's talk about this about button. So this this will give you information on the version of AutoTag or the report designer that you're using. Um, so as we can see, uh, the version of AutoTag I'm using is 15.2.345.0 and it's uh, 64 bit. Um, this also shows you what version your license is good through. So um, my license is good through version 16. Version 16 isn't out yet. 15.2345.0 is the latest, but uh, once 16 does come out, my key is valid for that one. Um, so yours will say what version yours is valid to, through. Um, this also lets you see how many computers can be using, how many systems can be used in this license. Uh, this is a super key. So I'm entitled to, this key's entitled to 50 systems to use it. Shows you when the key expires. Mine's gonna expire July of next year. And the other thing it shows you is the IP address. And this, this IP address is mine, but if, when I click the about button, anybody who's using this key at the time I click the about button would be listed in this IP address list. And so it's a nice way to see how many people are actually using your key at one time. So you can always keep track of making sure you don't violate the license, um, how many you can use at once. Okay, also up in here is this license button. And so if you're, this is where you're going to paste in your license that you received in an email. So let's just say uh, you're using your temporary key and you want to update it to your permanent key. Uh, you would uh, copy it and paste it into here. Also, if you're performing a major update, say from version 14 to version 15, then you need to add your new version 15 key here. All right, um, so today watching the webinar is the best first step to learning the report designer. Second step is going to our Winwood Tutor, and this gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to do something. So up here within the Getting Started Guide section, there's the Winwood Tutor button. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Okay, um, so these are a bunch of topics that you can choose from that you can uh, learn information about. You got auto tag basics, connect into your data in auto tag, tag tutorials, data tools, and data wizards. I'm just going to go ahead and click on this auto tag basics just to give you an idea of what a tutorial will look like. And once you click on the, the topic, it opens up to subtopics and this auto tag basic topic contains inserting a tag for each tag and assessing sample templates subtopics. Um, so when you go ahead and click on one of these subtopics, you'll find the objectives and the procedures of inserting a tag. Um, we also give you a GIF. So you weren't exactly sure from reading this instructions on how to open the auto tag ribbon, you could always click on the show me how button. And here we have a nice little video, simple video for this step, but still uh, give you step of videos for each step on how to actually perform the step we're trying to explain. Okay, uh, again, this is a great second step. So when you're building your template, 
You can always reference the tutor for step-by-step -step instructions on how to do something, um, in this instance, how to insert a tag. Okay, so the next recommendation that I could give you in learning the report designer is looking at the samples that we provide you. So back up here within the Guinness Starter Guide is the samples button, and you can also access that through the auto tag tab. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the samples button, and this opens up your Getting Started Guide. And within, the, within this, there's a step-by-step -step, um, instructions, tutorials, and sample templates. Um, and these sample templates uh, contain tutorials for SQL and XML. Um, we'll be including tag tutorials for JSON, but we aren't fully there yet. Uh, for this webinar, we're going to focus on the SQL data source. And for any tag that you can utilize in Report Designer, we have a sample for you. So here you got samples, templates for a bookmark tag, chart examples, import tags, alt tags, set tags. So again, any tag that you can use, we have a to a sample template for you. Um, but for today, let's go ahead and learn a little more about the if tag. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this if tag icon. And when it opens, it, you can see here's a step-by-step -step procedure on how to use the if tag. There's also further instructions on using the else tag. Another great thing about this is that it's connected to our Northwind SQL Server database. So you can actually generate output from these SQL samples so you can see the output as you go along. Great. Next step for referencing the use of specific tags with examples of each. Okay, let's uh, go back to the slides for a few minutes. Okay, we just talked about this manager tab. Okay, next. Now let's go over the auto tag tab. Here's where you'll actually create a template, a very easy template. Um, we'll be using some for each and out tags in that template. Basically, I'll show you how to select the tag, how to pull your data in using the data bin, how to insert using the wizards for SQL and XPath, how to create input parameters, and also how to generate output. Now, for an overview of what a for each tag is, a for each tag does three things. First, it fetches a set of data or the specific data that you want to utilize within your data source. Second, it can repeat that data through an iterative loop, for example, if you're trying to create a list. And third, it repeats the contents between the beginning and ending for each tag. The ending for each tag just tells report designer when to stop repeating content with each iteration of the loop. The for each tag is a tag that you'll use regularly. Now the most common tag is the out tag. And the out tag is basically short for output. So when you're trying to display data from your data source within your template, when you're ready to display a number, an image, or text, this is when you'll use the out tag. And tags are simply placeholders for your data. 
Now, for each tag doesn't display information. It gathers the data that you want to use, loops through the data, and repeats the content between the tags. This out tag actually displays the data that you want your users to see. So let's go back to Word and start creating a template. I'm going to go ahead and open up a new Word document. Open a blank one. Okay. The first thing to do when creating a template is to connect to your data. So I'm going to go back to this Auto Tag Manager tab. I'll go over to the Data Source button, and I'm going to go in and click it. And when I do that, it opens up this connection editor. And within this connection editor, you have um, your active, which right now is empty, and your recent inactive um, data sources. These are data sources that you've already connected to. Um, I have a couple in here that I just want to delete because we'll be making these through it. If you did want to delete something, all you do is highlight it and then click this trash can. But as today, we're going to be creating a new template. So let's go ahead and create a new data source that we can connect to. Again, you could have connected to a recent one just by highlighting it and clicking connect. But let's go ahead and click on this new tab. And so we give you the option to connect to a bunch of different type of data sources. I uh, here can connect to a Salesforce app. Um, I can also connect to JSON, OData, and XML, as well as SQL. And um, I have a few SQL options here, and this is because I have I've added some drivers to my system to assist other customers with their templates. If you don't have the SQL driver when you install AutoTag, the driver that you need to use with your data source, yeah, you can always install different drivers. And you can visit our wiki where you can find step-by-step -step instructions on installing the different SQL, installing the different drivers, and also um, for obtaining the proper drivers. For today, I'm going to connect to the Northwind SQL Server database. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and select this last option right here. And when I do this, this section changes to accommodate the different credentials for this SQL Server database. And when you go in and create a new connection, first thing you should do is give it a nickname. Um, we're going to be connecting to the Northwind SQL database, so let's go ahead and just give that its name. And this is the field that I was talking about earlier with the find and the replace, uh, the nickname for your data source. So uh, gave it a nickname of Northwind SQL. When you set up a nickname, uh, there can't be any spaces. It has to be one string. Next thing, when setting up a new data source, uh, you want to um, type in the server that you want to connect to. Um, I'm going to be connecting to our mssql.winword.net server. And this server is open to the public, so anyone can access it. Instead of selecting the database right now, let's move over to this credential center. And here I want to give it a, the username and password to access the server, and that this information is demo, D-E-M-O, all lowercase, and also demo, D-E-M-O, for the password. Now, there are a couple other options here. There's the display table, and if you hover over any one of these, you will see an, um, a description of what these different settings mean. Uh, for this webinar, we're going to stick with user. Over to the right. There's this read-in metadata. 
And this is usually checked. This is checked by default. There's only a few times that you don't want to pull in all of your metadata from the database schema, um, but this is a great option to keep checked. Okay, now that I've entered in my credentials, username, password, I need to select the database that I want to utilize. So what I can do is I can go ahead and click this drop-down list, and this will give me a list of all the databases that I've access to on server mssql.winward.net based on the username and password I've entered. So it, it helps you see that these are just the ones, I, none of these that are listed here, I cannot access. So this shows you the ones that you can access. So let's go ahead and choose the North Wind. Now, instead of going through this whole process of entering in this information, if your DBA has provided you with the connection string, you can come down here, click on this use connection string checkbox and paste in your connection string right here. Um, I'm not going to use that right now. Then I just use the stuff that I've manually entered in, but just wanted to show you that this is here. And the last thing is the root directory, and this is for using relative paths within your tag. So if you're referencing sub templates or images that you have on a shared network, you can provide the root directory for report designer to use to locate those sub templates or images. Okay, now that I have this screen set up the way I need it to be to connect to the database, I'm going to go ahead and test the connection. Click on this test button, and down here it'll give you an indication whether or not the test passed or failed. And this one, it says the data source test succeeded. Um, if if it was a fail, you would see it in red. But uh, so this note lets me know I can now connect to this database. So I'm gonna go ahead and click add. And you can now see it in my active section of my connection editor. All right, now that I'm connected to the Northwind database, I'm going to close this connection editor. And after connecting to a data source, uh, Report Designer automatically shows you the database schema over here on the right. And these are all the tables and the views that I have access to based on the username and password that I entered in that connection editor. You won't see your stored procedures here. Uh, those are listed in the data tree, um, and I'll be showing you that in a little bit. So let's go ahead, now that we're connected to a data source, let's go ahead and create a basic table. So I'm gonna go up here to the Insert tab, click on this Table button, and let's create a table, three columns by two rows. Okay, now that I have my table and my template, I need to use Report Designer to start tagging up my document. So for this example, we're going to use this categories table right here. And within the categories table, there's a four columns, there's a category ID, there's a category name, the description, and the picture. And with that in mind, the table that we want to make today, it's gonna to contain three columns. And so our table will wanna display the category name. We we'll also wanna display the description. And lastly, the picture. All right, now that I have my header row um, set up, we now need to supply data from the categories table to populate into this table that we're creating in our template. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select right under the category name table. I'm gonna go ahead and click here 
and my cursor is over here on the right, uh, I'm sorry, on the left, and tags will be added to your template wherever the cursor is lying or is blinking. So let's go ahead and start adding tags to this template. So I'm gonna go up here to the auto tag tab, and over here in this tag section is this tags button. And there's also a comes with a drop down. And these are the tags that you can utilize within the template. And if you hover over any of them, you'll get a short description of what they mean. To begin with, we're gonna add a for each tag to our template. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. A couple of things I want to point out regarding this for each tag. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. And then in this auto tag tab up here, next to the tag properties is this section right here for each tag properties. So whenever you select on a tag, this right here will let you know what tag I've selected. So with the for each tag that's in the document, so right now, I know I'm, you click, I'm selecting that for each tag because here are the properties for it. So it's an easy way to tell which tag you're selecting. But I wanna focus on a couple of fields right now, the nickname and the variable section. So by default, Report Designer provides you with a variable name for the tag. Right now, it's var name one. Let's go ahead and change this and make this a little more descriptive of what we're working on. I'm gonna change this to var categories and then press enter. And it'll ask me, do you wanna update all the tags or reference this? There's only one tag, so I'm gonna say no. And so this variable field, this is the name that Report Designer uses to reference this tag. But what if, what if you want to make the tag easier to read within your template? That's when you use this nickname field. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to assign this for each tag a nickname. Um, since we're working with the categories table, let's go ahead and call this categories. When I press enter, you'll see that that tag has changed from for each and now uh, categories. Okay, now let's go ahead and select the data that we wanna use with this tag. To do this, we'll use uh, this tag data tree shortcut within the tag properties section. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this. And here, similar to the auto tag bin, there's a list of all the tables, views, and also stored procedures that I have access to. And since we are working with the categories table, I'm gonna go ahead and select the entire categories table. Now, when I hover over the tag, I can see that I am bringing back um, all the data from within the table, the I, category ID, category name, description, and picture. Um, okay, I'm now gonna click this preview button because I want to ensure that we are bringing back the data that I believe we, we want working with. So I'm gonna click on preview and here, you can see exactly we're bringing back all the fields, the category ID, the category name, description, and picture, all four fields listed here in the categories table. So the preview is good um, to, to make sure that you're selecting the correct data that you wanna use. I use this preview button quite often to make sure I'm selecting the correct data before actually generating the output. So you'll see me quite a bit through this webinar using this preview. And that's also something I do when I'm working uh, support as well. I always like to see what data I'm, I'm working with.
So let me close this. So the 4-H tag is getting the data that we want to utilize. Now to display the data, you'll need to use out tags. So I'm going to place my cursor right here to the right of the 4-H tag. I'm going to go back up to the tags button. And this time I'm going to choose an out tag. Now that I have the tag entered into the template, I need to select what needs to be displayed in this alt tag. So I'm gonna go back up here to the data tree button, click it. And so this time, as you notice, the data tree looks a little different now. Um, by default, report designer knows that you're referencing a for each tag, and that's that for each tag right here. Remember we gave it the name var categories. And so this is all the data that is within that for each tag. So the options to select your table and views are still here. They're just collapsed by default as you don't want to pull your data directly from your tables. If you did, you would just repeat the first record in the row however as many times as it loops through the data. So you actually will want to reference your for each tag up here. So First columns, category name. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click, select the category name. With it selected, let's go ahead and preview it just to make sure we are getting category name. And here, yeah, we're getting beverages, condiments, confections, the category name from the categories table. Just what we wanted to be seeing. Okay, now let's add another alt tag for this description column. So I'm putting my cursor here. Going back to the tags button, selecting an out tag. I'm going to cl so click on it to select it. Go up to the data tree button, click on that. And this time we want to populate, the, populate this out tag with the description values. So let's go ahead and select that. And lastly, let's add a t an out tag to this picture column. So back to the tags, select out. Let's select the tag, go up to the data tree, and this time we want a picture. All right, almost done. Last thing we need to do is add the end for each tag. And again, the end for each tag just tells Report Design I want to stop looping through the content between the beginning and ending tags. So whenever you add a table, you want to put the end for each tag outside of the table. It's logical to think to that you should put it right after the last out tag in the table, but in actuality, so you don't create the list all on one line, you'll want to put the end for each tag outside of the table. So with my cursor outside the table, I'm gonna go up here to the tags, and this time select the end for each. And again, this end for each tag is just gonna tell report designer when to stop looping through the categories data, when to stop displaying the category name, description, and picture for each record. A cool thing about um, Auto tag is that we support about 90% of words functionalities. We don't support word art, so we don't suggest using it in your templates. You could use import tags if you wanted to bring in your images or logo. But since we're using Word, we can style this table any way we want to. So with this table selected, I'm going to come up here in the table tools tab and select design. So for this table right here, um, I want to keep a header row. I want to keep banded rows. I actually don't need a first row, so I'm going to go ahead and uncheck that. I um, want to give this one a style, so I'm going to click on this drop down, and uh, let's go ahead and give it this green style. And there we go. That's how easy it is I can style my table. Okay, now let's look at the output to see how this table will actually look. Go back to the auto tag tab, 
Um, I could click on this output button, but there's also a drop down. I'm going to click on that for the moment. And here is a list of the different outputs that you can generate. You can generate a docx, an HTML, PDF, printer, RTF. Now the options for PPTX and XLSX are uh, grayed out because they don't cross platforms. You actually would have to use Excel if you wanted to output to XLSX or PowerPoint if you wanted to output to PPTX. Um, the default is DocX, so let's just go ahead and choose DocX. Um, when you go ahead and output it and ask you if you haven't already, do you want to save this? I'm going to say yes. Oops, add this to my desktop. Uh, replace. All right, I'm just going to split the screen for a moment. Close this data bin as we don't need it right now. And so over here on the left is the template, and over here on the right is the output. One thing you may notice um, is this picture is not showing the image, it's just showing the raw data from the database. Um, let's go ahead and correct this. Um, but as you can see, before we do that, we got the category name and the different categories, the description, and those descriptions that pertain to the category name. And we'll go ahead and correct the picture right now. So I'm going to close this output for the moment. I'm going to go and select this picture tag. And again, you can tell that I've selected an alt tag based on this properties right here, alt tag properties. And so within this, um, I can give this tag a type. So I'm going to go and click on this type. And different types that the tag can um, be given are base64 template, bitmap, date, hex template, number, PDF template, text. I'm going to go ahead and select bitmap because if you want to display an image, um, you'll need to set the type to bitmap. And when I do that, you'll notice that this icon that the alt tag has now changed to an icon. And you can even change the size um, of this. Um, you can use this size drop down, and you can change it based on the bitmap, specified, specified height, specified width, fill width. I'm going to go ahead and choose specified width. Now, before generating output, let's look at the preview. Again, I like to look at the preview a lot. I'm going to click this. And is it actually returning an image? Yes. Yes, now it's an image. Okay, I'm going to close this. So let's go ahead and output again to make sure our pictures display. All right. And now we have our pictures. And the output contains all the styling that we set up um, in a matter of moments. Okay, well, that's the first template. Um, that was that SQL, SQL? Next thing I'd like to point out is that when you connect to a data source, you don't need to connect to just one. You can connect to multiple data sources at once as well as different types, for example, XML and SQL. I'm going to go ahead and close this, expand this up again. And I want to add some text here just to separate the two tables. So add XML table to view. All right. Now, again, when we, um, we want to connect to a different data source, so we do that through the Auto Tag Manager tab. And over here, we use the data sources button. And this time, you may notice that the data source button icon has a green circle. And this just lets me know that I am connected to a data source already. I'm gonna go on and click on this. And it opens up our connection editor again. And here you can see our active Northwind SQL data connection. But let's go ahead and create a new connection for XML. I'm going to click the new tab. And I'm going to select XPath 
2.0 right here. Um, we give you the ability to connect XPath 1.0 and XPath 2.0. XPath 2.0 just gives you the latest and greatest functions compared to XPath 1.0. Once I've selected the data source I want to connect to, let's go back and set up a nickname. We're going to connect to the Northwind XML data base this time. So let's go ahead and call this Northwind XML. Remember, no spaces. And now you can either type in the URL if you knew it, or you could browse to the file by clicking on this folder icon. And when you install Auto Tag, when you install Report Designer, you get within this Documents folder this Auto Tag folder. And then within this folder is your data and templates folder. Now I have a bunch of backups. You may not have these on my system, but these are just different uh, versions that I've loaded to help other customers. Let's go ahead and select the templates one. And then I'm gonna come over here, uh, click on this XML uh, and choose all files. So again, when we install AutoTag, there's tons of word samples that also get installed on your system. We're constantly cleaning up. Um, there may be a little over 200 of them, um, but th this is where you would find uh, samples that uh, we provide to you when, you when you install Report Designer. I'm gonna go back to the XML for a moment because that's the data source we're gonna set up. I'm gonna go back to the auto tag folder. And this time I'm gonna click on data. And these are all the XML data sources that I can connect to. Now, one thing before we move on, in the templates, I did want to show that not only do we have uh, Word templates, you can also access Excel, Podify demo templates, and PowerPoint templates, as well as your tag templates. We're going to go with data. Since we want to connect to the north one, I'm going to scroll down and choose the Northwind database. Okay, once selected, I can add a protocol if I wanted to. Um, I could add a schema as well. Um, I don't need that right now, so let's go ahead and test it to see whether or not I can connect to the database. Um, yes, it says data source test succeeded. Uh, it's on my hard drive, so uh, yep, I can connect. Now let's go ahead and add this connection. So now over here in the active section, I now have two data sources. Um, I have my old, the one I've connected to earlier, Northwind SQL, and now I have my new one, the Northwind XML. Um, you can connect to as many as you need. I've heard up to nine XML files being referenced, uh, but since this is all I want to connect to right now, I'm gonna go ahead and close the connection editor. And now when I close it, the data bin opens again, and it looks a little different this time. I still have all the tables and views from my Northwind SQL data source, but now I, but now I, I also have the parent and child nodes from our Northwind XML file. Okay, so, Spelling mistake, sorry about that. All right, so there's another option to make things easier for you. Let's say that you need to, you need all these nodes within this employee parent node. Well, easy thing that Report Designer does is you can select this and drag and drag it to the template and drop it. And when you do that, this window opens up saying, asking you which columns you like to, to select for the new table. Um, you can just select them all or you can deselect them. Uh, for this example, we're just going to be using the first name, last name. However, we want the first name to come before the last name. So I'm going to go over here to this order field and click on this button. And so now we have 
rearrange the order of how the table is going to be made. I also want to add in this higher date and lastly the country. So now with all the, the columns that we want our table to have, when I click OK, you can see Report Designer has created the table for me, all with our for each tags and for each tags and the alt tags for the specific columns, our first name, our last name, higher date, and country. Now let's make the head a little, a little nice, so let's put a space in there. So let's make sure that we're actually pulling the data that we want to see. So I'm going to go ahead and select this employees for each tag, and I'm going to come up to the auto tag tab, and I'm going to click preview. Okay, this preview is a lot different from the SQL preview, and that's just because uh, this is dealing with XML nodes as opposed to table columns that are formatted in a specific way. But as I collapse some of these uh, nodes, these employee nodes for Nancy, you'll see that there's another node for Andrew, another one for Janet, and so on. Okay, now let's go ahead and preview the first name, see what it's returning, and it's returning Nancy, which is the first name in the list. Okay, all right, now that the table's set up, let's style it a little. Let's go back to the design. Um, let's keep the header row, banded row, still don't need a first row. This time, we'll give it a different color. Let's go with the blue this time to give it a different look. Now, let's go ahead and output this to see what, it, what the style will look like. So I go and click output, say yes. Split the screen, let's close the data bin. Over here on the left is the template. Over here on the right is our table. We still have our SQL table for the categories, and now you can see down here, we have our XML table for the employees. But you may notice that this higher date um, is looking a little strange. Uh, this is actually the raw data from the XML, XML file, and we can format this date to make it more reader-friendly. Uh, let me show you how to do that. So I'm going to go ahead and select the higher date and go up to this alt tag properties section again. This time I'm going to click the format data button. And this may be similar to what you've seen uh, for styling in, XML, in Excel. Um, this is the higher date, so let's go ahead and format this based on a date. It's used uh, this long date version right here. And now that I have my format set up, I'm gonna go apply this, close it. Now let's just, while it's selected, let's preview it just to make sure it is returning the format of the date we wanna use. And yep, May 1st, 1992, that's the format we want. Let's go ahead and close this. And let's output this one more time just to see how it looks. Let's put the screen. And now here we've ha uh, formatted the higher date to make it look just like we want. Can even expand this just to show it off a little better. All right. All right, well, that's how you create a couple of tables that will display all the information uh, from the data source. Um, but what if you want to provide filtering before you actually generate output? Well, you, one way to do this is you can do this using input parameters. I'm going to go ahead and close this output. I don't need to save it. Now it's just from expanding that column. So up here in the auto tag tab, over on the left is our input parameters button. I'm going to go ahead and select it. And this is where I can define my parameters. Uh, click Add to add a new parameter. And give it a name. Um, let's make this input parameter, uh, call it Category. 
Uh, so this is going to be an input parameter for our categories table. Press enter. Um, I can give this parameter a uh, default value. One of the values was beverages, so let's go ahead and add that. Beverages, okay. Um, you, this is required by default, this check right here. You can also provide a type for this input parameter. Right now it's set to text, so you could set this to currency, date, integer, number, select, and select just gives you a report designer drop down list to choose from to choose the value you want. Um, but for us today, we're going to just stick with text. I'm going to select that. With all our fields entered, I'm going to click add. I'm sorry, I'm gonna, we already added. I'm going to click save. Now, how do we actually utilize that input parameter to filter out data? So I'm going to go ahead and select this categories table, and I just noticed the time where five minutes till nine. I'm sorry I've run a little slow today. Um, I do have just a couple more things to show you, so I hope uh, you guys will stay around, um, and I'll try. And this we can get through this part rather quickly, so uh, we may just go a minute or two over. So now, um, so now, how do we utilize that input? parameter that we just created to filter out data. So with this categories for each tag selected, I'm going to go up here and click on this wizard button. And this opens up our SQL wizard. On this left side, these are all the tables and the views that we have access to. Here in the center section, in the columns, portion. This is what we're gathering. We're getting the category ID, the category name, description, and picture all from the categories table. Below this is our sort section. So what if I wanted to sort the table by category name? You do that by locating that value you want to sort by and dragging it down into this sort section. And when you set it up right now, it's sorting A to Z. And over here on the right is our data preview pane section. And here it gives you a quick view of the data that's being returned in the for each loop. And as you can see now, the category name is being is sorted um, A to Z, beverages, to seafood. Now, if you wanted to sort it Z to A, all you do is click on that and choose sort Z to A. And when you do that, you can see in the data preview pane, this has table has been updated. And now we're sorting Z to A, so seafoods on the top and beverages on the bottom. Let's go ahead and put this back to A to Z. Okay, now below this sort section is this filter section. And this is, this is also known as your SQL where clause, and it's used to filter out the data um, based on that input parameter that we created earlier. And to do that, I'm gonna go in and click here, click here to add a group. Then I'm gonna click here to add a filter. So now we need to select for how we want to filter by. So I'm gonna click here to select the node. And we want to filter out by the categories table, the category name. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, click OK. Next thing, we want the category name uh, equal to, but if you wanted to change this, you could click on it and there's a drop down list. So you could say it's not equal to, contains, does not contain, starts with a bunch of different things. But we do want this equal to, so we're going to go ahead and keep that selected. And then over here, we need to click here to set the value. And uh, I'm going to use this drop down list uh, to the right of it. And so these are the parameters that I can choose from. And this category is that input parameter that I created earlier. Um, we only have one, right? We have only created one input parameter, so we only have one listed here. If we did create more, you'd see more. But since we do want to filter by this category, input parameter, I'm going to go ahead and double click it to select it. 
And when I do this, you'll notice now the data preview pane is only now showing the default value, which we entered as beverages um, in that input parameter. So we only want to see the default value, and that's beverages. So it, it, this uh, filter is now working for us. Um, you may have noticed that when we entered this filter or the where clause, it was added down here in this section. Um, and this, this grayed out section, um, you can't edit this section. Um, if you wanted to update this, you'd have to do it through the tag editor. Um, we'll show you updating this in the intermediate training. We'll show you updating through the tag editor in the intermediate training. But here you can see we are now dynamically adding the where clause for our categories input parameter right here. And you'll notice that the dollar sign squiggly back it right here. This is this is how we define variables that you want to reference within Report Designer. And also you can see right here, here's our order by which we set up in the sort section and we're ordering by category name. So this is kind of cool because it helps you learn SQL statement syntax just by dragging and dropping certain fields. So now that we set up our input parameter right here to equal the category name within the category table, let's go ahead and click OK. So now what happens when we generate output? I click on the output button, say yes to save. Um, you'll now see this uh, variables prompt. There could be many variables listed out here, but right now we only have one. We have beverages set by default. And so let's go ahead and change this as we did see that in the data preview. And let's call it, let's, so let's uh, filter by confections this time. So with that entered, let's click OK. And up here in our output, this SQL categories table is now only showing our confections record. Before it showed all the categories, now we're only showing the confections record. All right, so what about XML? What if we want to filter this table in some way? We can use the XPath wizard for this. So we, we updated this category table dynamically with input parameters. Let me show you now how to filter statically. So I'm going to go select this for each tag in our employees table and this XML table. As this is the data that's being pulled in from our data source, I'm going to go up here to the wizard button. And this is our XPath wizard. It has a different look simply because we're using XPath. But down here at the bottom, you'll notice how that XPath is being generated dynamically, just like SQL. So what if you want to add a sort or an order by? Um, you do that by clicking, click here to add an order by. And then, now you need to select what you want to order by. Let's go ahead and choose first name. Click OK. And here we are sorting ascending order. If I scroll to the top, you can see Andrew. You can see Ann and Janet. Now, if you wanted to change this and sort by descending, you just click that select descending, and again here you can see now we're sorting by Stephen, Robert, Nancy. So we're going in descending order. XPath, in XPath you don't actually have the order by option. We give you the ability in Report Designer to do this order by. So now that we have this set up, what if we want to filter statically? No matter how many times we output the XML data, we want to see those employees who are in a specific country. So to do that, I'll go up here and click here to add a group. And I'll click here to enter a condition. And I'll click 
here to select the node. And so we want to filter by country on this one. So let's go ahead and select country. Let's leave it equal to, but you could click on it and we give you other options to sort by. Let's so give equal to. And now we're going to click here to set the value. So in this time, we just want to see all the employees who are in the UK. So let's just go ahead and add UK to here. Press enter. And once I do this, you'll notice down here in the X path, uh, with the order by first name, we're now selecting only those employees where the country equals UK. Okay, that's what we want, so let's click OK. I'll put this. Uh, let's now enter another option, seafood. Click OK. So now we are returning all the employees from whose country is listed as the UK based on that static filter that we set up within the XPath wizard. So that's, so that's basically how you can filter your data either dynamically using input parameters or statically using a defined value. So let's go back to the slides. I uh, just want to make sure we covered uh, the topics. So we went over the SQL and XPath wizard. I showed you how to sort dynamically and statically. We talked about input parameters that allows you to add input just before generating output. Showed you how to add a default value, how to reference that parameter in your tab in your tag and, uh, and, and the prompt that is shown to enter the value. Okay, you may want to take a screenshot of this, screen, of this page while we're on it, if you can. Um, here are the resources. Here's some really good resources that you can utilize. If you want to look up anything from our knowledge base, you can do this at wiki.winward.net. Um, we're constantly updating this wiki. We're actually creating a whole new wiki, um, which you can now access through ohana.winwardstudios.com. So we still have our old wiki, wiki.winward.net, but we have started to create a new one with uh, new images and new documents. So if you, I suggest trying this new knowledge base first. If you can't find what you're looking for, go look it up in the old one. Um, we're going to eventually move everything over to the new wiki. If you can't find what you're looking for, you can always reach out to our amazing support team at support.winwoodstudios.com. Or you could also email them at support at winwoodstudios.com. So if you have a question that you can't find the answer to, go ahead, don't hesitate, and contact our support team. If you want to retrieve your license key, um, say you need your permanent key, uh, you can do that at store.winward.net. And if you want any changes or have any feature requests that you want added to the engine or report designer, you can do this at ideas.winward.net. Okay, um, next week there will be an intermediate training. Uh, we'll go over some advanced for each tag, for each tag, um, for each tags. Sorry, we'll go over some advanced features for the for each tags. Uh, we'll talk about column based instead of row based expansion. Show you hide. I'll show you how to show or hide specific things. So you could use a if else tag or switch tags. Uh, we'll go over conditionally formatting your output. Maybe you want to show red text or fill the cell of a certain color on output. I'll show you how to do that, and I'll show you some different menu options in Excel. Okay, there's going to be a survey at the end of this webinar. Please feel free to fill it out truthfully. Any feedback that you can provide will help me and the attendees with the rest 
with the next webinar. So um, I do I do appreciate anything uh, that you could um, provide as feedback. Let's go ahead and look and see if there's any questions. Uh, there is one question that was asked. Let me just have a moment to read it. Good question, really good question. Um, I was hoping to be able to discuss this a little more. So the question is, uh, can you please explain a little more about pods? And uh, yeah, so pods are great. They, let me open up a document. Let's open this one and expand it. So pods are great if you have content that you reuse often uh say you have a header that you add to every template a header or a footer or maybe some verbiage in the body of the of the template that you always add to every template so instead of coming in and developing you know um setting up the template for that thing um adding all the tags all the text what you could do is you could actually create a pod um, and then you could reuse that that content over and over again without actually having to create it so to do that i'll show you quickly so let's say this is something that you reuse in a lot of templates so what i'm going to do is highlight both of these and go up to the auto tag manager i'm going to go ahead and create a pod when you do that, I want the pod to have everything I selected, but it does have other options. Hovering over can help you understand what it is. Um, with that selected, let's give it a pod name, uh, basic webinar. And let's go ahead and add this. Let's see. And then the pod file, you can add this to an existing one. If it's not listed, you could browse to one. Uh, you could create a new one. Let's just go ahead and do this. Basic webinar and the pod files end in the RDLX extension. Uh, basic webinar pod, let's just call that. So I'm going to save that. So if the name and the file selected, let's go ahead and click OK. So right there, I have just created my pod. Now, if I wanted to reuse that, and then pod if i wanted to reuse that it's as easy as first loading the pod um, it's i put it on my system so i want to load it locally here i'm at my desktop here's that pod we just created so i'm going to open it click ok and when i do that you'll see our pods over here here's the one i just created the basic webinar here's the pod that goes in the document and as the and as I've copied these two tables these tables are also connected to data sources so the pod has also copied or created those connections for me so if I want to use this pod all I have to do is take that drag and drop it here paste and now that pod which contained two two tables, an SQL and an XML table, and its styling has now just been set up. So now if I output the document, I will keep the seafood this time. Let's put the screen, let's close the pod, and you can see here that we have our first category, SQL category table, seafood, and the XML table. But now after the adding pod, we have the exact same table, styling and everything. So pods are really great when you have content that you re reuse often. This is a great way to save time. When you do use pods, you will have to set up within this auto tag manager options you will need to frame it and you can get more information on pods in our wiki but that's just a quick view good question and i hope you can see how powerful and useful pods are okay well 
that was our only question today. Um, I want to thank everyone for joining. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and uh, goodbye now.